Hi guys, so I'm going to um, explore the Moby Max website. Our school pays for it for us all to have, it, and I maintain the student list, but I don't really use it much more than just um, as an answer or as a problem based if I'm trying to create something really quick to help some CTT, which is our collaborative team. Um, since I don't know all the content areas in my school, it's usually a good place for me to go to get like a bank of problems based on standards. So log in. Um, I was really familiar with this website probably about four years ago when I first got into the district. Um, I used it a lot when I did, it's a class we call Math Boost, so it wasn't an actual like core class, it was an exploratory class for our kids at Tufts Goodlow. Since then, they've changed the website a lot, um, so I did actually get some time to explore before shooting this. Because my internet is being sketchy and my computer's unhappy. So when you log into Moby Max and you click the personalized assessment, you can see all the content areas that are there. So there's reading and literature skills, and this is the one actually because of my position right now. I use a lot, and then the language ones. You can search by standards when you're doing it here. I'm going to focus just on the math ones because if I was to do like a personalized learning lab as the math teacher, this is where my focus would be. So these two things have always existed, the numbers. So this is just to practice number sense for your kids that might be lacking it. And from this side, from the teacher side, you can't really see what it is. I'll show you when I log into a student account what it looks like, but you can see where um, a couple of the kids are at. But it's just to get that, build that number sense that when we were in school, it was a huge deal, but kind of is lacking, at least in my students lately. And then fact fluency is just practicing their math facts. Again, can't see much really from this end. It will make more sense when I show you the student side. Um, so you'll be able to search your kids and build up the class. So for those of you not familiar with Moby Max, it is a responsive curriculum. Most of the content areas have a placement test that the kids can take initially and then it will assign them lessons based on how they did. So if I go to a math, my math section, you can search by students. If you scroll here, it says sort and filter. So you can actually build classes and it's pretty simple to build a class when you are in this section or in the roster section, I'll show you back on the home screen. You just push your groups and you can push create a new group and then all the students that have been shared with you, um, you can just select and then it will automatically put them in that class. One thing I don't like about Moby Max is as an administrator, if I create a new student, I wish that it would automatically share it with my other teachers in my building, but it doesn't. I have to manually actually share it out. So that's one downfall. And there's not a, as far as I know, there's not an easy way for it to like pull from a, another source to always keep our roster live. So if we have a new student start and a teacher wants to use this, you have to add them as a student and then share the student with the teacher, which is kind of a headache, but we don't actually have that many teachers use it in the building. So it's not that big of a deal for me. So you can look at your students based on your class. So if I pull up fourth period then, you're going to see that all my kids right now um, just have like the number one lesson assigned to them because I haven't really used it at all with my students. I just use it to pull problems. So you can look if I assign placement tests to them. If I got logged in by default, Moby Max gives them a placement test, which is good if you want to use it for the responsive scheduling for them. So when you go to a grade level, so I teach eighth grade. You can search by le letter or lessons. Um, so it's going to break it down into the major parts of mathematics. But as we're moving to the Iowa core, sometimes it's a little easier to look at it in standards because you know exactly what you're looking at. So when you're looking here, 
can push the down arrow and it'll show you all the parts that they have for that lesson. They actually have a, a pretty good chunk. So when you click the blue writing, what you're going to do is you're going to get a preview of what the lesson would look like at, on the student end and then taking it. And depending on how you set up MobyMax, you could assign them like this lesson specifically. Um, and the nice thing about some of the lessons, especially math, I'm not really sure how this looks in other content areas, is that if a student just rushes through it, it's going to remake them take it four times before they actually get to move on, which is nice. And it tells them the correct answer if they get it wrong on the next screen before it moves on. So it explains to them why their answer is wrong, which is nice if you are doing this as a like check after you tell them to like watch this video or try this on your own or check before you move on. It does explain to them why they keep missing the problem. And you on your end will actually see that they took it like three times to actually get through the lesson. So that would give you a good point to meet with a kid or conference with a student. Uh, to the home screen, some other teacher functions. I'm gonna go through the questions and copy them down here. How easy is it to create an account and get started? So you can create your own account. If your school actually pays for it, you'll have to have the administrator set it up. Um, navigation is a little tricky the first time you get into it, but you just the icons are colored based on like content area. If you're an elementary teacher, definitely explore all of the elements. Your math teacher, you really just need to focus on these three icons. If you wanted to create student accounts, if you were just using this, they do have a free version of this. If you were just using this for yourself, it's really easy to create a new student. Or if you didn't want to ask your administrator to get a new student, you're pretty sure you're the only person using it. You can register a new student yourself. You can bulk register your students, or what I do is import the entire class list or the entire school list. Um, but say just simple, basic, you want to register a student, ID number, first name, last name, create username, create password, register, and that's it. That's all you have to do. If I can. So I push restart because I just assigned that lesson to him, and I wanted to show you this because this is really important, especially if you're a math teacher. Um, if the student hasn't started, by default, it's going to assign them a placement test. I used to just say, no, don't assign them a placement test and let's get started right away. If you don't have time to pause for the kids to take a placement test and you really just want to use this in class, this is nice because then you don't have to worry about lessons popping up automatically. But another really kind of annoying part in a middle school thing is it starts them off at kindergarten, like counting and money and stuff. And my kids, what they would do is they would shut down because the test was just really beneath them and it kind of was disrespectful so they would just blow off the test and then anytime they finished an assignment I assigned to them it would jump them back to like counting money and they'd get really frustrated so yeah you want to know if your kid's testing in eighth grade at fourth grade math but maybe you actually just are going to go and bite the bullet and say no matter what like they're going to start at sixth grade math so that's actually a really cool feature that they've just changed since I started using it and I didn't realize that that was there and I actually probably would have used this website more often this year. So if I push save, now when I go into the lesson, I will have to take this test before I get started. So I'm actually going to log out. I already automatically knew that because I was just logged in as a teacher. So Every time you log into MobyMax, this is something new that I didn't know was there. It gives you this cute little comic. This is a newer feature. But also it gives them a daily challenge, which I didn't know was here either. If I push home, so here's, I wanted to show you where like kind of the fact fluency thing comes up. Again, all these things I've not used before, it's going to give me a placement test for them. So they can actually see where I'm at. So that it actually gives me placement based on my actual effort but when you go into some of these other things like a skill review this is kind of cool um as a teacher if they're in my class I can pull up a skill review and then it shows the kids on their screen what they can do with it another feature that I didn't show you I didn't mean to just log out but that's okay um questions 
Um, so based on your content area, especially if you're an elementary teacher, you would definitely want to look as far as math goes, everything's broken down by standards. So there are like some very specific lessons, but I not, I might not be able to find anything on, but my overall like major standards that are very popular and not like super skill specific, I can find most lessons on. Um, how rigorous is the assessment? The assessment is pretty true to the lesson that it's based on, which is nice. Um, sometimes when you're doing lessons and then you get to the test part, it's like the all of the practice is at like DOK 1 and then the assessment's at DOK 3. But we max is pretty true to the assessment, um, assessment to the lesson. And you can actually look at the assessments to make sure they match. Or if you really don't like the assessments, that's okay. Um, you could assess them a different way using some of these other features that they have, like the whiteboard interactive. So you could make your own way of kind of assessing if they're ready to move on, especially if you're doing this in the person learning environment, that score that they get on this might not necessarily be the score you're going to give and you might just use it as a self check. Um, I would say for Bloom's taxonomy, most of it's going to be into the application. There's not a lot of like problem solving. It's a lot of just, you know, the basic math practice, which is Sometimes all you really need in math, um, you can find really cool videos or make cool videos, do the problem-based half, but sometimes you just need to get down to the nitty-gritty, do they understand how to do it, and give them a couple checks. Um, the, student does the system does provide feedback to the students um, and to the teacher. So as a student's taking the assessments, it will tell them if it's wrong, it will reassign them a lesson if they do poorly on it. And then as a teacher, I can always go back and look at like very specifically like what the student missed, how they did on that exact lesson. Um, the hoop jumping part is just kind of getting familiar with the website. It's not that it's hard to use. They try to make it as friendly as possible, but it is a little confusing the first time you jump on it and you definitely want to mess around with it before you start um, having your students play with it. As far as the student side goes, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. They're not going to be able to like click and mess around and get in something else. Worst case scenario, they're supposed to be working on math and they work on vocabulary instead. There's not like a hidden place where they're going to just like waste a bunch of time. It's pretty educational focus and the game part that they can play. They have to earn that game part by completing actual lessons. Um, I think the best aspect of the lesson is most of the things do have like a placement test. So it could be a true adaptive environment if you could get the kids to take it seriously. Um, the worst part is with our school, anytime a new student starts, I have to remember to add them to MobyMax and then share the name out with the staff. It's um, more of a hassle than anything, and I wish that there was some way that this system and like our populated digital like system would just talk to each other and eliminate me, but that's okay. Um, I would absolutely recommend this system. I could definitely see in an elementary environment how it would be really powerful and how you could utilize it in multiple ways. The problem with being in a middle school classroom is that we have very set curriculum and we don't have a lot of time to just pause and do a lot of that personalized learning environment. And there's so much on this website when they're talking about when I teach math. Realistically, the one icon is the only thing that really applies to me. I could do fat fluency and I could do numbers if I had time. But one icon, this is kind of overwhelming to look at, knowing that only one of these things actually applies to me. But that one icon has a ton of resources, so I try to push it whenever I can to teachers so that they use it. If this is good, the teacher is needed, what would this advice would you give to that teacher? I would say definitely test it out, mess around with it, use a pretend account so you can see what the student side looks at it, know the ins and outs. The help section on MobyMax is amazing. It gives you an overview, but anytime you're like in a section, so say if I'm in the math section, the first time you log into it, it's going to bring up like a really cool tutorial and walk you through every process of it. So it's called page help. If you click out of it, don't pay attention to it, and you're like, man, I really don't understand how to use this part of it. 
when you go to page help, it actually walks you through it like very specifically. And it's such a big website that a lot of the times you can find stuff out like on YouTube. They do do updates on it, but it's not very often. And it's not like a huge update that you have to worry about like the entire system changing how it works. Um, this is way longer than it was supposed to be. Sorry. Have a good night.